See, lately I've been seeing others judge others based on their appearance and how they dress. Saying you gotta look a certain way to go to Christ. See, I think different. Check my swag. I'm getting with the spirit. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling up with the rings and I'm feeling it. Yeah, they preach the judgment. And they don't even know me. They don't know they take a second. See, I'm feeling with the glory. Check my swag. It's your girl, Jess Nia. And boy, do I have a question for you. What's love got to do with it? Everything. What's grace got to do with it? Everything. What does his mercy have to do with it? Everything. In 1 Corinthians 13, it starts out talking and focusing on the love of God and clearly tells us we can be anointed, gifted, and talented. But if we don't have his love in our hearts and displaying it one toward another, then we have and we are nothing. Join us now for Untold Chronicles with your host, Jess Nia. Hey, hallelujah, my God. Woo. Hey, my UC fam. It is your girl, Jess Nia. I am on the line today with my brother, Dr. James Mabel Jr. out of Beaumont, Texas. He's going to talk to us about his new releases. He's going to talk to us about what it means uh, in the business, going through the business and how God has blessed them. Uh, Dr. Mabel, are you on the line with us? Yes, ma'am. I'm on the line. Thank you for having me and to all the listeners out there. I appreciate uh, the opportunity be on the line today uh, and just fellowship and talk about uh, what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. And we perceive that he is doing something great in your life, my brother. Listen, audience, let me tell you just a little bit about uh, my brother, Dr. James Mabel Jr. Being the youngest child of four with three older sisters, Alicia, Bernicia, and Crystal, Dr. James Mabel Jr., who hails from Navasota, Texas, has carried the mantle of being special since birth. He is the son of James Mabel, Se Mabel Sr. and Mary Harvey Mabel. Growing up in the home of a pastor was not always easy, but it was definitely worth it. In fact, James gives credit to his parents for preparing him for the journey called life and introducing him to Jesus Christ, hallelujah. In 2012, Dr. Mabel's life changed forever. God allowed Dr. Mabel and Tracy Lewis, a Dallas native and James's college sweetheart to get married. Congratulations. Five years later, James says, I thank God for Tracy. She has seen me at some of the lowest points in my life and has been by my side. She is my precious jewel. Amen. Education was a priority in the Mabel household, and Dr. Mabel did not disappoint. He graduated with honors from Navasota High School in 2003 and enrolled in Prairie View A&M. Within a six-year span, Dr. Mabel received his bachelor's degree in music education, master's degree in educational administration, and Ph.D. in educational leadership. However, his doctorate degree almost cost him his life. One afternoon on his way home from class, James fell asleep at the wheel and got into an accident, causing his Jeep to flip seven times. The next year and a half was filled with struggle and determination as James continued to pursue his doctorate while being confined to a wheelchair with seven permanent screws in his left foot. Nevertheless, Dr. Mabel survived it all. His professional career includes being a music teacher in Waller, Texas, a research assistant at Prairie View A&M, and an independent newspaper distributor for the, House, for the Houston Chronicle and advisor at Houston Community College downtown. Dr. Mabel knows that his education, along with God's favor, has opened and will continue to open doors for him. When it comes to ministry, Dr. Mabel knows the calling on his life a special gift to the body of Christ. He has always been a songbird. At the age of 15, he taught himself how to play piano. 
In 2000, his passion and love for music prompted his father to name him music director at his home church, Missionary Camp Baptist Church. Seven years later, at the age of 22, Dr. Mabel finally answered the call to preach. Meanwhile, he continued his passion for music by auditioning for BET's Sunday Best singing competition in 2009. Although he missed the show by bowing out in the tie-breaking final round, this experience served as a launching pad for his ministry. On the plane ride home, Dr. Mabel wrote a song titled, Dream the Impossible Dream, which he released in March of 2015 and is available on all major digital outlets. He soon realized that God's plans were not his plans. God was ordering his steps. In June of 2015, Dr. Mabel accepted the offer to become the youth pastor at the Antioch Baptist Church in Beaumont, Texas, under the leadership of senior pastor Dr. John R. Adolph. When Dr. Mabel arrived, I'm sorry, when Dr. Mabel arrived, I'm sorry, at Antioch, the G412 Youth Ministry had only 22 active kids. Today, that number has grown into the hundreds and steadily continues to increase. In addition, his music career continues to flourish. In July of this year, he released his new single entitled, Praise Him, that is available on all digital outlets. Dr. Mabel has shared the platform with artists such as Kirk Franklin, Kurt Carr, Kirk Whalen, Jonathan Butler, Brian Courtney, Wilson, Brian Courtney Wilson, Miranda Curtis, Zebulon Ellis, Leandra Johnson, Zacardi Cortez, Bishop Martin Sapp, Bishop William Murphy III, Anita Wilson, Darwin Hobbs, James Fortune, Fred Hammond, Ernest Pugh, Dr. Dorinda Cole, Clark Cole, Pastor John P. Key, Dottie Peoples, Sean McLemore, Kelante Gavin, The Walls Group, and Jean Moore, just to name a few. What a great company of a few that is. He was recently named a four-time nominee for the 2019 Rhythm of Gospel Awards, hallelujah, which will be held in Baton Rouge, Louisiana next July, and a two-time nominee for the 2019 Texas Gospel Music Excellence Awards, which will be held in Houston, Texas in February. Dr. Mabel uses his gifts of, mu of ministry, music, and education all over the nation, giving God the glory. James and Tracy have been floored by the favor of God upon their lives, and they are simply enjoying the ride. Hallelujah. So, Untold Chronicles family, today your girl, Jesnia, has the extraordinary Dr. James Mabel Jr. on the phone. Hallelujah. We are so blessed, Dr. Mabel, to have you uh, on the line with us and would love for you to share a testimony or something that God has laid upon your heart to share with the listening audience on today. Well, my sister, as you just read the bio and the story of and the journey of how I've arrived at this place in my life, and, uh, just 33 years of age, uh, you know, mentioned testimony about my car accident and things of that nature. God just being a miracle worker, but if I were you know, to just encourage someone to, to tie that in. Um, I'm a huge believer in God's word, Philippians 1 and 6. He that begins the good work Come on. in you uh, shall Uncle complete it until yeah. the day of Jesus. Amen. And it was at that point uh, when I got into my accident and found myself uh, in a wheelchair for a year and a half, learning, you know, how to walk all over again, mm. hanging with a walking belt therapy four days a week, three hours a day in the evening. Um, you know, sometimes God has to break you to bless you. That's right. And, um, and so going through that process really uh, allowed me to see God who he really uh, was. And so, and you know, at times being a preacher's kid, um, you can just so get so engrafted and ingrained in just church and warm with emotions mm -hmm. and, and doing it just because. Um, but somewhere along the line, you're going to have what I call um, a Damascus experience where you have to experience God for yourself. Come on. And just because your, your dad is, uh, is the pastor or your mom's first lady or you have a, your grandparents are deep in the church, that kind of thing, that doesn't automatically mean relationship. That's right. Um, 
component. So it's just, it's just at the point, when I got to that point, I said, God, okay, I just have no choice to trust you. And at that point in time, my sister, I was, um, you know, I was the youngest person in my doctoral cohort at 25 years old. And we were just a week into the program when that happened. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, now wait a minute. I, I went to Sunday events. I've been to the show by one person. You know, it's always been a dream of mine to get my doctorate in education. And here it is, one week into the program, I have this accident that literally almost cost me my life. Wow. And I said, God, now wait a minute. I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me and to just, wait a minute. It's, I'm at the cusp of another dream, and now I feel like here's another roadblock. But I'm reminded that you that, that obstacles are nothing but opportunities for God to just show who he really is. Mm -hmm. um, developing my relationship with him. And so if somebody was listening on this line, you know, to encourage them to just let God do the work. Now, he is not going to tell you how he's going to do the work. Come on. And how he's going to shape you and how he's going to perform you and how he's going to transition you through the different checkpoints of your life. He just says, trust him. Yes. And a lot of times, you know, we seem to think, sometimes we as people really, really seem to or believe the fact that we are in control of your faith. Mm -hmm. But God has a funny way of just reminding you that you ain't running nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Listen, nothing. And so, you know, getting to that point in place uh, in life, and that's just one of my many testimonies of God just reminding you along the journey that he has not forgotten about you. And I will say this, sister, there have been times that when God continues to open doors, you know, God is a God of order. Yes, you he know, is. If I, would have, if I would have made, you know, Sunday best back in 2009, um, I would have had to quit my job because I was teaching elementary school in my very first year. And then I also would have had to drop out of school because I was working on my master's degree. Okay. But my first desire was to always be a PhD. And, say, and so God was just like, James, why you, you're upset and depressed? Because I went into a major depression. Mm. Uh, I didn't make the show. I put on about 44, 45 pounds. I mean, I went very, very low because as a kid at 24, you're this close to lights and fame and, and you know, all this extra. It's TV, it's entertainment. Right. And it's like, this is a dream come true. I mean, to be this close, I'm a little country boy from a country town of Dallas, from the Texas, about 5,000 people. And here it is, I've gotten this far. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm looking at BET. You know? Right, because I've never heard of Navasota. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, Nava who? Where's that at? Uh, and so, you know, you get to the point in place, and it's like, wow, God, but God says, I'm a God of honor. Yes. And so, let me do it my way. So get on, get on the plane, get your behind back to Texas, go back, and here's the thing. When while God is doing the work, He says, I'm gonna complete the work, mm -hmm. but I require you to be faithful while I'm completing While I'm completing it. And so I need you to go back, go back to that classroom and finish teaching your elementary faith. Go back and get your education in first you and them. And so now instead of you being I could I could let you walk through certain doors being just James Faith for my my plans for your life, what I predestined for you. Right. Now that I went back and I finished the work, now I'm walking the door as Dr. James Faith. Come on. So that has been officially broken to pieces and shattered by by things that have happened in life and what was meant to break me actually blessed me. Thank you, Jesus. I've gotten to the point of place where I'm like, you know what? I've been to the lowest of the lows. I've been at the point to where you're looking at your limbs and you can't move because your nerves are fractured. You have to depend on everybody to do everything at such a young age. And then, you know, we take little things such as walking for granted. Yes, we do. But when you're 27 years old and having to literally get your brain to connect with your limbs again. Oh, I've been there. Foot in front of the other. Yeah.
sermon, and I'm done. I preached the sermon. Uh, the process <laughs> is not always pretty, but he made me a promise. And I used the text with Jesus and the disciples that was getting in the boat, and they were on one side. And the promise was, Jesus looked at the disciples and said, hey, y'all, let's go to the other side of the lake. Uh -huh. That was the promise even before they got in the boat. That's right. So they just had to be faithful and obedient. Not knowing that the storm was going to come when they mm -hmm. got on the boat and mm -hmm. they got in the lake. But he said, I'm going to make you this promise. We're going to make it to the other side of the lake. Of course, you know the story. They get the boat, they come the storm. They, they come the storm. Jesus is about to drive. Yep. And Jesus I already told y'all before we started, we were going to the other side. Now, why are y'all walking? <laughs> Look, and I'm trying to sleep. Right, Jesus, right. like I'm trying to take a little a little nap. I done done so much already. Let me rest, please. But you know what, uh, Doctor Mabel, that's a lot of times what we go through. That's a lot of times what we do because God can give us a word for us to stand on. But the question is, do we have faith enough to believe what He said? See, we a lot of times our faith comes into question. The Bible says, "Now faith is the substance of things." hoped for and the evidence of things not seen that means we can't see it we only have to believe it perceive it uh, knowing that it's been spoken and we have to do this thing according to what's been spoken without seeing so we are doing it as an act of being blind and just going because we have God's word that's telling us I got you this is the way that you're to go just trust me and put one foot in front of the other just trust me I'm not gonna run you into nothing just trust me you're not going to miss it I got you all you have to do is believe but see we have been accustomed to wanting to see things ourselves. It's got to manifest in order for us to see it. Well, that ain't faith. And that's not how God works. It's just like building a building. You have architectural plans that have been written up way before the building was ever to go under construction. The building has been drawn up. The plans have been approved. And now we're getting ready to go into construction. The first thing that we have to do is lay the foundation. Well, once the foundation is laid, it's got to be set. You can't walk on it. You can't do nothing with it. You can't plant nothing. But the foundation is there. That goes to show you that that's the first step of building what was already drawn up and spoken into existence. But we don't know how to receive that. Then the next step is they began to put up frames letting you know how big the building is going to be. How tall it's going to be. There's a scaffold that's put up as it's being resurrected. You know, step by step and level by level. It's being resurrected. And, and you still don't see it, but you see the bones of what's beginning to happen. Well, they told me that this was going to be done in 90 days. There's no way that it can be done. God said 90. I don't see it because right now they still having issues with putting up the structure of the building and they still going up with it. They not even done. They ain't put the pipes in. They ain't put the wiring in. They ain't done, you know, dug in for the plumbing. They've done none of that. And so you're telling me 90 days this is going to be done? Well, as it goes on, you see the structure goes up, the insulation goes in, the drywall goes in, all the plumbing is underground. They put the electricity in. And pretty soon on day 89, you got a resurrected building. But see, we don't know if everything worked inside the building until day 90 when everything's been tested. But it was the process that we didn't understand of how it was going to happen as we're going through, through the construction phase. We don't know all the little ins and outs and bits and pieces that got to go in just like constructing a building they got to go back and they got to fix some things some things got to be reconfigured some things got to be reconstructed but it don't mean that the building's not gonna happen it's just the process of what happens and putting up the building yeah. Yeah. you know and so what you went through was your building phase we went through our process and it's the process that's sometimes ugly most of the times it's ugly because you know when you're building something you got debris everywhere you got issues everywhere you got dirt everywhere you got a little bit of gossip over here you got somebody backbiting back here you got some tail bearing going on you got some loss in your finances going on you got all of these things happening throughout the process but guess what it don't mean that it's gonna happen we just got to keep going and building on what god said yes, so we got to just trust and believe that this thing is going to happen so you went through your process and God said, that's all right, brother. Listen, I want you to be Dr. Mabel Jr. So when they call upon you, see, they got to put some, how they say that? They got to put some respect on that thing. You see what I'm saying? You ain't just uh, James Mabel Jr. You doctor. They got to put some respect on the bottom, you know, on my, on my title. Whether you like me or not, you got to give me what's due to me because I earned that thing. 
So he did that in order. So when you are seen in the world, when you go into these places, when they say, oh, yeah, we got Dr. J, we got James May, but they'd be like, uh, uh-uh. uh. No, we have Dr. James Mabel Jr. Yeah, the great one that, you know, got that song that's just released, uh, Praise Him, in, in July of 2018. You know, that bestseller, that one that's going to get him them awards coming in 2019. Yeah, that's who we got on the line. And do you remember that in 2015, he was on Sunday Best and he wrote this song, Dream the Impossible? Yeah, that one right there. That's who we got. See, he got to go back and remind them because, see, you ain't just coming on the scene. You were being built then, though. You know what I mean? You were being, you were being uh, put up. The process was happening. But he got to go back and remind them in the process when I was building him. He ain't brand new. That building, I had them plans laid out for him a long time ago. (laughs) You know, they just got to, they got to be reminded about who you are. I, I so appreciate you. I will be getting my Ph.D on December the 1st and baby I can't wait because put some respect on it you hear me I told them I said call me Dr. Just Nia that's all I'm saying I just want you to say Dr. Doctor if you want to we don't even matter because you know what you go through to get this thing it don't come easy say this if i could just interject real fast see you know what that reminded me of it reminded me of an abraham experience see because he was still abram at that point when he had to leave everything behind him he had to obey god and it was in his obeying remember he said go take everything you got take your family even take little lot and lottie and uh don't look back But see, Lottie, she couldn't go. She couldn't take, she couldn't handle it because they was already talking. They was already saying stuff about him. And she turned around and looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. But Lot said, no, I'm going with you, Abraham. Uh, Later, Lottie, I'm sorry. You know, he went on. But Abraham, leaving everything that was familiar to him, obeyed God. And what did God do for him? He gave him land. He gave him stuff. He gave him houses. He gave him dominion. He made him the father of many nations. And we still call him that to this day. See, sometimes you got to go and get out from under daddy's legacy. You know what I mean? In order that you can build your own. God said that a good father leaves a legacy for his children's children. And see, you got to leave your own legacy for your children's children. You and Tracy are going to have some babies. And you got to leave a legacy for them. And daddy's legacy is okay. And God may even have you go back later and take that over. 
but you had to show him that you could do it on my own because I had to obey God and through obeying God he's going to lay up some stuff for you some houses that weren't built for you some land that's going to be given to you some property that's going to be given to you some things that are going to be they're going to just be laid up waiting on you because you obeyed the voice of God and now you have your own legacy working for you and Tracy and the babies that are coming Come on here. even applies to Tracy because you know Sariah before she was Sarah had to go with Abram she didn't know what was going on she just had to follow and believe because she trusted the God in him so Tracy you know she a praying woman an interceding woman standing with her man of God she had to believe that God spoke to you and said do this thing going to the new ministry going to this because she knew that something great was in you so she said God if God said it let's go let's roll out peace daddy I love y'all sisters it's been real it's been real fun but me and, and my baby we going on and so Tracy is going to be blessed too because she hearkened unto the voice of the Lord that is inside of her husband and she went right along with you and see at the times when you couldn't pray she prayed at the times when you could stand she was standing at the times that you couldn't receive she was receiving see that's the thing about a helpmate a good thing you know what I mean they know their place they know how to stand in they know what to do and that's why the Bible says that whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain it that means continue to get continuing to obtain obtain a favor from the Lord see that's your favor and she knows how to rock and roll with you you see what I'm saying everybody can't she's grace to do it God gave us the grace because she's your good thing she continues to know how to rock and roll with you. <laughs> yes, God. That's it. And that's the thing about it. I thank God. And people always tell me all the time, they'll tell her, I just don't know how you deal with Dr. Junior. He's here. He wears so many hats. I said, you know, God built her for me. Yes. He built her. So and she, has, she has been so phenomenal. I thank God for her um, and just who she is to me and just, you know, that's that's one person who can just say, and I just did what I love about her, uh, dear. She uh, she told me from day one. She said, Junior, because of course my nickname is Junior. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I call it Junior, that knows it. So she said, Junior, listen. She said, This is not, I'm not saying this out of disrespect. I'm just saying it because I just love who you are. She said, In so many words, Junior, she said, I don't care about your PhD. I went to college with you. I saw you get it. She said, I don't care about your accolades. She said, I'm not bothered about you. She said, I'm there because. I want you, and I want what God wants for you, hmm. as James Mabel Jr. She said, all that extra, I could care less about. She Come said, on. I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned about your character than your accolades. Come on. She said, you can get all of your awards. You can go hear that everywhere. You can get your grammars. You can get all these rhythm of gospel awards, and hopefully and believe in God and get to the fellows and the doves and everything else is out there. Mm -hmm. She said, but why, why, why carry something with such prominence when your character is out of mind? Come on, you know what? When I see men of God, I look because I'm, I'm a, my husband and I are apostles in the ministry. But when I see men of God, I look at their wives because she going to tell the story. You see what I'm saying? She going to tell whether or not his character right when he's standing up in that pulpit and he's saying, well, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. You know, when he going into his little spill, look at her face because if her face is tooted and booted, you know something wrong. 
You know, mm-hmm. something ain't right. But if she's sitting over there and she's smiling and she's like, yes, Lord, he is a great man of character. He is great. You can see all that on her face because I'm one that my face will tell everything. So I know a lot of us as, as women of God, we ain't perfected the face, stoic face yet. You know what I'm saying? So to look over at a woman of God and see the disposition on her face about her man of God, it tells everything. It tells every so when she can stand with you and you're talking about integrity and character and all of those things that you possessed in God and her face says, yes, that's my man of God. Ooh, I love that thing right there. When you looking, when you looking at that face, then you know he really is living what he's preaching out here to everybody else. Because I done looked at some faces and it's been like, oh, we sugar, you should have been in the back when he was giving the introduction because baby, you done just told everything on your husband. So. I understand that. And I'm just so excited and so happy uh, for where God is taking you. Great man and woman of God, great levels of integrity that you both have. And uh, just a little bit that I've read on you and the little bit of time that I spent with you, I promise you, I feel like I know y'all already. So uh, it has, it's it's just been great uh, talking with you thus far. If there was somebody out there that's listening that is trying to pursue that which you have already pursued and still moving in. Uh, oh, oh, let me say this. Big ups to Uncle G because we love him for what he does and, and how he comes in. And he, he adopts literally those that are that he comes in contact with and in alignment with. He adopts them. And so big ups to him for that. But somebody on the line that's listening, somebody on the line that's saying, I am called to do that, but I just don't know how. And I've had so many setbacks and so many obstacles. How do I get through it? If you could go ahead and speak to that listener and then pray for them, I would really appreciate it. Yeah, someone who's out there that is in the process and having the same uh, similar desires to pursue that thing which you know God has shown you. Um, let me be the first to tell you um, that, that setbacks and rejection and, and obstacles and challenges are all a part of the general makeup of what God is doing. The Bible says in Romans 8 28, we spend our time, but I really want you to receive it as you listen. All things, and we know that all things work together yes. for the good yes. and that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So if you are listening and you are, you have a experience the theory of setback or you experience uh, momentum like you take two or uh, four steps forward and then you take like it takes 20 steps back i want to encourage you and let you know that god has not forgotten about you and it is within all those things that you experience i want you to take a personal account when those things happen it's all a part of the plan you have to thank god okay you know i know what you've shown me so, God, what are you trying to teach me through this? Because we all can celebrate and all jump in and, and run turn flips and run laps when the celebratory moments happen along the way after, after the doors he opens and after the blessings and emails come through. Confirmation about this that never come through. But it is when your character senses, when you're on your way to your destiny, you're on your way to what God is playing. And things happen that are unexpected or Come on. out of the ordinary or against what you have really been believing and praying to God for. I want to tell somebody that I really feel this strongly. Psalm, uh, it's Psalm 37 where it says, if you uh, obey him, hmm. uh, he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. I want to tell somebody before I pray, and this is the word of somebody, that what God has Amen. I believe that. And so you definitely know that, that through, the, through every setback, through every obstacle, through every challenge, I've been through it. I mean, I've experienced stuff not just from a, from a musical standpoint. And, it's from a, and if I was just speak to the musical angle, there, it, it, you have to know the business aspect of this as well. I tell artists a lot of times when I own my travel around the country that, uh, yes, you have the Lord, you have the Holy you have to follow God. You have to get education and the knowledge behind what you do and why you do. Music is 1% singing and 99% business. Hmm. And so you're having some issues and struggles in terms of making your way through the music industry, making with the right people, that kind of thing. It's a music business. I know we 
we always say, we, and I always, I'm a big guy, I'm a, you know, we're in the church, we have the Holy Spirit will act fast. The Holy Spirit is going to do what he's going to do. He is, he is intelligent. But, hey, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right. Get the knowledge in the industry. So there are forums and things that you need to attend and places you need to be in and conversations that you need to have. You have to till your own ground. I'm a country boy. And so, if you want to be able to plant some crops, you got to get that road together, you got to turn that dirt over, you got to be able to cultivate that ground so that once you plant your seed and once you bury that seed, then you have the foundation and the cover of the knowledge. And you just continue to water the thing by walking your way, and then all of a sudden it's going to block You know, it's going to block right there and there, but there's a difference. There's a time between you planting your seed and receiving your harvest. You know, and so hang in there. Stay strong, stay focused, and know that what God puts on your heart, because I'm sure since you have the desire of your heart that God has shown you, and everybody, every child of God has their own set of desires. Amen. But if whatever you, what God has placed on your heart, he'll so put in your hand, but he just wants to see how strong you want to stand in the face of trial and tribulation. But we got good news. And Jesus said, it, hey, I know you're going to have some tribulation. Come on. But be of good cheer. Because I've already overcome that. Ha. And so uh, I want to pray for somebody. And thank you, sir, for giving me that to pray for that. That needs that to be out there. You may be at that point of uh, no return. Just be curious about what's happening in their life when they're trying to do Amen. Uh, Amen. We Father, we are faithful for the opportunity to be able to be on this line and to pray uh, and intercede, God, uh, for our brothers. God, my, that might be a sister or brother out there uh, who is at the point of no return. They feel like they cannot go on. They feel like because of what has happened to them, or they feel like because of the perspective setback, or uh, the, the nose of life and the turn downs and the rejection, uh, that what you have planned for them is not meant to be. But God, all you have to do is just turn into your word and look at uh, uh, every, every uh, instant of opposition was an opportunity for you, God, to really, really step in and manifest your power and your glory. And God, sometimes you have a funny way of doing it. Sometimes you allow opposition and things to happen in our lives for us to get to the point where we finally articulate in our spirit that we can't do this by ourselves. And God has told us in your word, apart from you, we can't do nothing. And so, God, I can see from my brother and sister that on this line, this way, God, be that strength right now. Be their portion right now. Breathe upon them right where they are on their life journey. Help them to know, God, that their story that you're, that you're crafting and that you're drafting for their life is going to be a blessing. God, not only just to the nation, but God, for somebody that's in their church, somebody that's on their job, somebody that's in their community is watching their journey and how they're dealing uh, with this thing called life. But God, just be God. We just allow you to be. We stand in the gap and just say, be only can be. Nobody can compare to you. Nobody can do what you've done. God, you are an omniscient God. You're an omnipresent. Yes. You're all those God. You're all see God. So God, we stand in the gap. God, I pray that every listener on this line feels your presence even now. And God, minister to them. Yes. Wrap them in your loving arms, God. Comfort them and let them know that although they have to go
thank you for your love. It's a Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great prayer. Yes, yeah, so anointed. We thank you, uh, Brother Dr. Junior, because that's what I'm going to call you from now on. Dr. Junior. Yes, you should have told me that one. Thank you. <laughs> so I know that somebody received that heartfelt uh, and warm anointed prayer. Now, um, my brother, if how would people get in contact with you through your social media, email, or anything of that nature that you'd like to give out? Okay, there are several ways that uh, individuals can contact me. Uh, number one, they can go to my website, uh, which is www.jamesmablejr.com. Uh, if they would like to book me for an event, uh, they can click the booking tab right there on my website, put in the information, and we'll be in contact with them. Uh, they can also reach me on Instagram. Uh, the handle is jmablejr. Uh, on Twitter, it's the very same handle, J. Mabel Jr. Uh, I'm also out there on Facebook. I have two pages on Facebook. My personal page is James Mabel Jr. And then my artist page is Dr. James Mabel Jr. Uh, and it has over 152,000 likes right now. I thank God everybody that's connected with that page and keeps people in touch, you know, with where I'm at and what I'm doing. And so they can reach me on Facebook as well. Uh, and then my email address, uh, if you want to just email me directly, uh, they can email me at bookdrjr at gmail.com. And so any one of those ways, it's gonna, I'm going to get a notification some kind of way. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. If somebody wants to touch out, I'll reach, the, I'll reach out to me and uh, stay in touch as well. Amen. Well, I thank you so much for being on the line with us today. Listen, I'm going to lock your number in. I ask that you do the same so I can give you those good eateries in Chicago. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for you and Tracy. And also, uh, I'm in the Texas area, so maybe we can get together, have some lunch or do something. Uh, I minister to the millennials. I love the millennials, even though I'm not one myself. Uh, God has just preserved me that I look like one, even though I'm not. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but uh, I am also going to be sending you a friend request on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well so we can stay connected and I can uh, keep up with what you're doing and promote you as well. I like to promote all of my um, guests and my artists and all of that that come on to uh, the Untold Chronicles uh, radio show, magazine, talk show, however God leads them to this platform. We'd love to do it. And so thank you so much for taking out your time with us today. We really appreciate it. Please give Tracy my love, and we will talk very soon, my brother. All right, you see, oh, fam. I sure will. Thank you so, so much for having me, and just may God continue to smile upon you and hubby as you guys continue to do kingdom work. Honored to share this moment with you today. Thank you so much. God bless you, my brother. We'll talk soon. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, UC fam, there you have it. Another successful interview. That was Dr. James Mabel Jr. Dr. Jr., as we're going to call him. Uh, a great interview of talking to that one that is uh, wanting to get into the business side of ministry, the singing side of ministry, and he gave some great tips. He gave an anointed word, and he prayed for you. So I pray that there was something that was said that encouraged you, touched you, uh, impacted you to want to do what you've been called to do. It's your girl, Jess Nia. We'll see you real soon. Love you. Peace and blessings to you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Untold Chronicles with Jess Nia. I pray that there was something on my show that resonated with a part of your life or the life of someone that you may know. And I also pray that what was shared has either brought about a change or insight on how a change can occur. I am Jess Nia, and I look forward to hearing from you so we can share your experiences and areas of breakthrough. And if you need assistance with either of those things, or you simply have a story you would like to share, I ask that you connect with me via my Facebook public figure page or my Jess Nia ministry page. As for me, it's always a pleasure to do what the Lord has called me to. We'll see you again on next week at the same time with a new show and a new guest. And remember, they shall know the truth and the truth shall make them free. Thank you for joining us on Untold Chronicles and I'll see you next week. Good night.